angels live in my town. So listen to f up. It's crazy. This sounds like you actually have something to say. Oh, good for you. What the fuck is he talking about? You guys are doing terrific. And this is great ice tea. I think every American should be watching this. Okay, what's good, everybody? Oh, back in the fold. It's Nagger's number one podcast, Angels of My Town. Coming back at you. We got all the usuals on the show. We got Mike D on the show. Oh, hello. Mike. Mike is on the mic. Mike is Mike. Mike is Mike. Mike, 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 Mike. And then we got Carl on the third mic. Still Happy to be Carl. back in the lab, guys. Nice to see y'all. My man, Carl Hines. Hey, Carl, what's up? Mr. Hines. Mr. Hines. Producer extraordinaire. Comes from a long line of Nazis. Wow. <laughs> and I, catch up. I totally got Mike with his arm extended there, too, when he did that. That was awesome. Uh, no, it's not true. There's all rumors. It's better than what I've subliminally do, been true. doing without Mike knowing. <laughs> this is true. Mike's, Mike's been making satanic symbols uh, subliminally throughout the show. I didn't know about I didn't know about it. For about four episodes. Though. I told him, I go, Mike, I want to stay away from anything satanic. And he said, well, I've been doing the symbols for mm. like white supremacy shows and shows Satanism. If you can find them and send them to us, I'll give you three bucks. <laughs> Looking for those screenshots. That's all we got why, in the budget. Why, why three? Is that that's is all that, that's in the budget? Is that not the symbol for like white? Oh, it's half a six it? too. Is it six or three? I don't know. <laughs> and two plus stay two away is from four. The it's quick mass. Stuff. It's quick mass, bro. I don't. I don't. Even quick stay mass. away from the satanic. There's a lot of satanic stuff. I, it correct. scares me. It's, I don't know. I want, when I when I die, which is going to eventually happen, I'm sure, even with AI. Oh, do you think so, doctor? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bung. I'm gonna have to meet my maker, and he's gonna have to tell me, you know, whether I'm going to heaven or not. And when you get to those pearly gates, <laughs> and you know, I'm gonna have to say something. And Mike, Mike <laughs> fucked up with his symbolism. Just blame me. It's fine. Yeah, well, that's what we usually do. We just fuck blame Carl or... What, do we, what, do we, what are we blaming Carl for today? What aren't we blaming Carl for? Wow. We got a big show. Yeah, buddy, first one, first time. First time thing. Popping a cherry here today. We got a big show. We got uh, coming up... Um, sorry, this is... I don't have the recap, Mike. Uh, you should. It's the Jesse musical oh, no. guest. Sorry, 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 sorry. Getting confused, all I, the information flying at you. I get confused, and that was a bad fade out on the fucking intro. Okay, should have no one's gonna know. scratch. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so no, we've had uh, we've got we're gonna recap last week's show, which was we had brunch beverages. Kim on. and Michelle. Kim and Michelle, uh, they did great. Okay, hard thought... drinkers, let's drink hard. That was a good show. Uh, check it out if you haven't seen it. And um, today, also, we're gonna check. We're hey, gonna go check buy out. their products. Yeah, their product is great. Brunch, a canned mimosa. For, uh, Mike, loved Mike, it. Mike loved it so much he spit it out. Yeah, right. It was. Uh, it was. That's how I taste test. That's how I taste test. That's how. <laughs> that's how a professional does it. And uh, it was excellent. If you're a functional alcoholic, you're gonna love their day drink beverage. <laughs> uh, next, we're gonna check in with Carl for things he would do for his dream gig. We have a list of things, wow. Carl. We're gonna check in with you and see. Let's say how low we're, you we're will gonna go. gauge. We're gonna check your range, see where you're at. Oh, where the bar is. I like it. I like it. People He's say that Craig. you gotta do some. <laughs> people say you gotta do some crazy things to get into Hollywood and to, you know, make your dream come true. So we're gonna just check in with you and see. We're gonna really dive into what it. What your commitment is. I like it. I like this really what I your like commitment it. is to the profession. Strike or no strike. And then uh, we've got topics. We've got some topics we're gonna get into. Has feminism made men? Not be gentlemen anymore. That's an interesting question we're going to tackle later on in the Very show. Very interesting. And then we've got uh, Jesse. What's his last name? We didn't get to ever get a Jesse. He just Jesse, goes by Jesse. Just going by Jesse, like Jesse Jewel. Jesse is a girl. Jesse's girl. I want it. Was it? I wish I had Jesse's, Jesse's girl. girl. We should know that. It's a little Rick Springfield there. Yeah, Ricky yes, Springfield. Ricky Springfield. He's a buddy of mine. Yay. Hey. <laughs> Um, <laughs> he's gonna play. He's gonna play on the show live in studio. First time ever for Angels in My Town. First time ever we're gonna have a live musical act. That's really interesting. I'm super excited, Carl. Oh, I'm totally stoked. I love uh, like one piece bands. I live, love music. Like I, think, I, think I love live music. Yeah. Who doesn't? Yeah, for sure. And yeah, so we got a obviously jam packed show like we normally do. 
thanks to uh, our producer extraordinaire and uh, and Mike D and uh, everybody, everyone on the team. Everybody here. take credit. Angel in my tone. Everybody take credit. Bringing you another big show. Yes. So I mean, let's yeah, the brunch beverages. I mean, uh, the girls were excellent. They were good sports. I did spit out their drink as soon as I took a sip, and um, Michelle thought it was hilarious and. Kim, Kim looked was, horrified. Kim looked horrified. I don't know if we caught that. Did we get a shot of that, Carl? 100% we, sure got that. we got that. We got a shot of yeah, Kim's horrified. Yeah, we'll rewind and see that. Rewind. Definitely the second one, for sure. <laughs> because you, did you know the spit take was coming or no? I had no idea. The producer <laughs> didn't know. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> you, so, guys are, you guys are making shit up on the fly, and I'm trying surprise, to roll with it. Surprise, surprise. You didn't surprise. know again. Didn't know again, but I thought we did discuss Blame that. Off. We When we have the creative interview, we had the creative meeting the night before that Carl didn't attend, probably because... He's working. He was, yeah, working. I was probably sick again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> he was probably sick again as well. Probably sick. But uh, no, we, we that was that was a planned spit take. Don't, lest you think that uh, uh, that that I was spitting out their drink as a reaction to the flavor or the quality or anything like that. Uh, no, that was not the case. It was a joke. It was completely. Farcical. Doesn't matter if anybody gets it. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. It was a completely farcical take their drinks are good go out and buy them it's completely farcical brunch beverages brunch beverages they were great they were great locally on the show. owned and locally how about operated. that we did it we did a pepsi challenge put them on the spot they didn't even know we were going to do that put them on the spot with a pepsi challenge. she was like yes i can do it and they and they put they, they picked out their drink and shat on the competition at the same time yeah it was wonderful yeah and uh, we we support who supports us fuck you temps yeah so brunch, brunch, and they're gonna kill, and they're gonna make me a mezcal mule. I said I want. That's the drink they I want. They did confirm that. She said she's working on it. They were already ahead of the game. How about that? Maybe they could call it the Angels Live in My Town. Uh, we did mention we would love our face on it. I mean, jeez, I'd be willing to. Well, spoil we it. might as well fuck Carl since everyone loves fucking Carl. <laughs> oh, Carl. Everybody loves fucking Carl. Mm. <laughs> Why? Well, we can have like another Bud Light That's fiasco. Debatable. That's debatable. <laughs> oh, a Bud Light debacle! <laughs> wow, you're gonna revolt. Why are you gay? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, that's why. Anyways, so yeah, that was great. Uh, great episode. Check it out on the YouTube channel, on Apple, on Spotify, Spotify on all the shit that you listen to and consume. Or watch. Your, mind your mind your minds. Share, subscribe, whatever, follow. Yes. Please do something. <laughs> please. Please, Mike. Leave please. some comments. Leave Mike some comments. Please justify spending all this time and effort. We do. It's t- at some point we got to like get a little bit something. something. I mean, our event was amazing. We did a great event months ago. Wonderful. Check out only uh, one night, only two. Dose. Uh, check out only one, one and two. Check them both out. Check them okay. both out. They're actually very good. And then check for number three. It's coming. Coming on its way. Yeah, it's on yeah, its way. We're gonna tease it a little bit here. Um, but yeah, let's get right into things. Yeah, let's. Paul I'm, do for a dream get. I'm, I'm excited to about do this. this bit. It's in the works. I mean, it's been a long time coming. Mm, let's see um, how deep so Carl, he will go. So, Carl, we've got a list for you. Okay? Okay. It's crazy. Be ready. Carl. And you're going to have to decide, you know, if, like, is is my dream gig worth, you know, maybe selling my soul, maybe compromising myself a little bit. But we don't know what you're, the depths of Carl. We don't know like how you could deep, be Leo. You could be Leo. Exactly. Think about it, like, instead of, like, you know, it's like Carl Hines, Kate Winslet, Titanic. That you shit know? is going down. Yeah, right? does that appeal to you? Is that, that something that you nice would be interested in? Does that like it? Hey, man, I would love something like that. Why not, right? Okay. Right? That's your sure. dream, right? That's, That's interesting. Sure. That's interesting. Okay. So, let's see what you would do to do, like, to achieve something like that. If it was... Hey, if it, let's party! If it was put to you, yes, exactly. If it was like, hey, buddy, let's, you know, let's Make do some of it. this and I'll get you... I'll get you into yeah. Spielberg's Nest movie, the yeah. next Tarantino. Next, you're the dinosaur in Jurassic Park. Yes, exactly. Wow. Exactly. I like it. Okay. So, let's say this. Let's start with someone with something easy. Would you take a meeting with Harvey Weinstein? <laughs> take a meeting with Harvey Weinstein. There you go. Just take a meeting. Um, <laughs> today or like 10 years ago? Come on, Carl. I don't know, Carl. We gotta get in this business. We gotta okay. fucking schematic. Into it. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel comfortable being in a room alone with that man. But I mean, if he's behind but your double, dream gig, he's behind double pane glass right now. I mean, um, he's got he's got a lot of Oscars, a lot of Oscars, a lot of Miramax. He's Miramax, right? A lot of sway. Miramax. Yes. Miramax. You're starring in the next big Miramax film. Probably get you a Tarantino movie. Let's do two part. Ten Probably years ago, Tarantino. Harvey Weinstein wants to have a meeting with you. Ten years ago, no. Today, maybe. 
Oh, interesting. Why? Because he's protected and he can't like watch you jerk off or something? Like what what are we getting at? Yeah, I'd feel a lot more safer when he's like What are you abroad? Being watched and He yeah. doesn't how do you know he has interest in you, Carl? Yeah. He just wants a meeting with Would you. Would you Carl? turn trans over the weekend? Did I, feel, I miss something here? I feel like there's probably a lot he's of gonna, stuff that he doesn't he's gonna that, rape that, your butthole? That might not be known about him that didn't come out. I think he's there's not into dudes oh, though. So why he, would you Oh, we don't know that. You don't think know. You think he'd want to diddle you? You think he'd want to diddle you a little bit, so you're a little nervous? Wait, you know something we don't know? Is he into dudes? No, no, no. I'm just saying maybe that stuff didn't come out, right? Okay, right. so he wouldn't meet with Harvey Weinstein. So you're scared. Are going to say no? Scared yeah. of Harvey. A little scared of Harvey. So you're saying no to Harvey Weinstein. He's scared of Harvey. Who's scared of Harvey? Do you believe in this day and age? Or maybe he's prejudiced against Jews. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's no to Harvey Weinstein. No to Harvey, okay. No to Harvey Weinstein. Not Harvey would Weinstein. You, would you join a sex cult slash maybe the Illuminati? Join a sex cult to be. Yeah. Well, he's already get, in a sex cult. To get my big gig. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you might have to join a You're sex in cult. You're in Titanic, bro. You're in Titanic, but you got to fucking join an orgy with George Lucas and fucking, you know, a bunch of fucking, you know, predators. And I'm not saying George Lucas is a predator. I'm saying, but Lucas. <laughs> oh, you did picture, just pitch, say. Picture, picture Lucas and like Kubrick and Jonah like, Hill's there. Jonah Hill's there. It's all dudes. <laughs> Well, maybe. Well, come on. It's Use a sex call. A little bit. Sex call. You know, they probably have some young girls. Like Kate Winslet's there because she's on the film too. I'm, I'm not going to join. I'm not going to join a, a weirdo sex call. I'm not going to join a cult to get a gig. No. 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 I'm gonna say no. no to sex. Cult. I'm going to say no. No to sex cult. So far, Carl's. So no to Illuminati and sex cult. So far, Carl's percentage of making yeah. it in Hollywood's gone way. down. I mean, your your percentage is going way down. If, if, if Illuminati if Illuminati's real, then no. Uh, but it, for, uh, like to be honest with you, if there was a gauge of that calculator like they had with the... Yeah, remember are the you going to make thing? it? Are you going to make it right now? You're really low. You're getting low. You're getting low in the mix. <laughs> we'll see, though. We'll see. We can be, there's, lots of, there's lots more. Yeah, you, you might be able to get some different roles. Okay. Would, you be, would you be... I think you're out of Titanic right now, right? Right now, it might be out of Titanic. We'll see. There's lots more here. Okay. Oh, you're going to rate me by which gig that I get? Like, yeah, we might. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. We'll tell you, we'll tell you what gig you're going to get if you, if, by the end of this. Yeah. I love so far, it. no to um, everything. Would you, would you be cuckolded by The Rock? Cuckold it. Assuming you have a girlfriend or a significant yeah, a good other. significant other, and the rock wants to cuckold you, would you be like, okay, because you're going to be the next Jumanji? I, I don't have a problem with that. Oh, okay. Oh, right. He has to be cuckolded by the rock. So he could be the boy in Jumanji, the kid, though. Okay. You can't be Robin Williams. Okay. Kevin Hart? You can't be Robin Williams. <laughs> you, might be, you might take over the Kevin Hart role, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty big role. Pretty big role. Well, get cuckold. I mean, Depends. getting cucked. <laughs> uh, okay, would Shit. you attend a satanic ritual? Ooh. Attend? Just attend. Just watch it. Just know what you're watching. Uh, Maybe jerk off a little bit yeah. in the corner. Yeah. yeah. I would attend I would attend a satanic ritual. Even if they were like sacrificing babies and children at it? Not if they're sacrificing humans. But well, you don't know you that you until you decide. show up. You can't decide what happens at the satanic, satanic ritual. ritual. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. It's not your choice what happens. At the, it's a satanic ritual. So you said yes. You've already said yes. yes. You're going You're to committed ritual. to killing babies, you scumbag. You want a scumbag? I'm not going to go witness. Wow. Won't be with Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. But you kill a baby. You kill great, babies. Carl. Okay. That's okay. great, Carl. We see, we see where Carl's priorities are at. Okay. Would you let your child sleep over at Michael Jackson's house? <laughs> no. Ooh. No, that's a no. Why? That's a big no. Why? Why? What do you know that we that's don't know? It's all speculation, by the way. That's a lot of rumor and innuendo. I'm allowed to speculate. Okay. okay so you think you think Michael's a pedo? You think he would t- you would you would do something was, untoward? Was and not just have like you know. Make make pigs in a blanket and pizza bagels and watch movies. I feel like he would try to make pigs in a blanket, and that's why I'm saying no. Oh, jeez, Carl, you went there. Mm. That's really dark, man. So that's really dark. I think he's just watching the Goonies. You know, would you release a sex tape? Yes. Okay, that's a yes. So we've got two yeses, right? At least. We've got three, three yeses. Okay, you also going, said yes going. to uh, keep going. Being we'll, cuckolded by the Rock. We'll recap that. Okay. Would you let Quentin Tarantino suck your toes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes, he would. Wow. Mike did say that was a yes. I thought. So. I think that's an easy yes. You're, that's you're that's the easiest his, yes of all of them. So his far. next film. Yeah, and but it depends get, on what you get for that, though. He's probably getting a close up of his feet on the well, movie. You're telling me I'm getting a big gig, my dream gig. This is dream yeah, job. Yeah, but I mean, you've really shot down some big ones. Okay, okay, keep going, keep going, keep we'll going. We'll see. Oh, he's, he's redeeming himself a little bit. Okay, okay, go ahead. His chances are going up. Okay. Okay. Would you have drinks with Bill Cosby? Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's amazing. OJ likes it. <laughs> That's great. 
Would the, you? You're really. You're really you're debating having this. drinks with. You're Mark really Cosby. thinking about it. Yeah, I think I'd have to say no. The man drugged women. Women, yeah. not raped, dudes. Well, you raped. Well, that's true. <laughs> so you guys don't even agree. I'm gonna go with a no. I'm you're not gonna have no. drink. I'm not gonna have You're right. He didn't Cosby. rape dudes. I would have totally drank with Bill Cosby because he's not raping me. Yeah, you never know. He's not. You know, you're fucked up. Just keep an eye on your drink. My offense. That's a bad choice, Carl. Go ahead. So you say no to Bill Cosby. Yeah. No to Bill Cosby. Yeah. Yeah. Let someone suck on his toes. He's okay. A rag. Would you not rat out OJ? <laughs> I would not rat out OJ. You would not rat him out. So you would you would you would cover for OJ. Wait a minute. Hold you would on. cover for a murderer. Again, cover is, for a murderer, is that but now? You... Is it now or then? That, I mean, like he kills his wife, and then you're like, "What is the difference when it you was?" You know what happened. His wife. I mean, there's all, you can you know me. Out. I'm technical you can about dime stuff. him out, but you said you don't. Like, if I know it now, if I knew for sure now, I mean, there's nothing that could be done OJ's, about it. OJ's anyway. like, OJ's like, I know you saw something, but hold listen, on I'll a second. So he would he movie. would save a murderer, but he wouldn't have a drink that someone's not going to do anything to him besides possibly drug him. And you wouldn't have a you wouldn't have a. I've seen you drink before, Carl. And you get blackout regardless if Cosby's around. That's true. That's true. True story. You're very vulnerable. Who's Bailey? (laughs) Like, come on, bro. Like, but you wouldn't rat out OJ. That's crazy. Like, if I was there the night that it happened, yeah, I would rat him out. But today, I don't. No, no. But he's telling you, you're gonna get your dream job if you don't rat me out. Yeah. Today. Like today, he comes to me. I don't understand. It's di- all these schematics. It's totally different. It's totally different. Statue of limitations. Different thing. You're getting at? He, d- double jeopardy. He can't be tried again. But let's say it was then, though. Let he was... can come out and say that he did it. It doesn't so change let's say anything. it was then. Let's say it was then. Let's say it was back when. Yeah. If I knew that he did it, if yeah. I was an eyewitness could, to it, you, you 100% testify. I'd testify against him. And you'd lose your dream job. Yeah. Okay. I don't think OJ's getting me a dream job anyway. So, so I don't know He was I, a naked gun, bro. I'm going to still take that as a He yes, was indeed. I'm going to still take He said yes right off the hop. Better think about these a little more clearly. Yeah, don't be, don't okay. be, don't be. Would you let lighting. R. Kelly pee on you? <laughs> Can I get a little pee pee? Can I get a little pee? Really thinking about it. This is deep in thought, Mr. Carl. Really thinking. Gargle that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some pee. Why are you gay? <laughs> He's really thinking. Dream job. Just a little tinkle. Just R. Kelly P. P is P. I mean, it's, it's you're, you should be flattered. He usually pee, pees Probably on no. like underage girls. Probably no. I'll go with no. He's gonna say no to R. Kelly. I'm gonna say no to R. Kelly. That was good timing, by the way, Carl. Yeah. Wow. Now, should most of them, and, and, and regardless, should all of them been no? I mean, I can't believe you would do some of these, but I mean, we gave like a couple of them were like, yeah, I guess not so bad. I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't let Quentin Tarantino suck your toes. Like, what's the issue with her? He's a fan. <laughs> I, I don't think that makes you gay, but whatever. No, I mean, that was probably a little toss-up one. We I think Crazy Carl is right. We kind of peppered some in there that we might think you'd yeah, do. Yeah, we can't give them all. No. I don't think you'd do that many, though. You should have he heard more. some of the ones that we were going with. Would he you did blow Wayne. Hitler? Like, I mean, that was way that was, off. Yeah, that's we, obviously we, a no. Would you Wait, kiss, would was you, it, Carl? I, what was the question? Would, would you, you blow kiss, Hitler? Would you blow Hitler? Dead Hitler? No. Oh, okay. Would you kiss dead Hitler's feet? No. Ooh, oh. no, you have to think about it though. Uh, that's interesting. You have to think about it. That I did. Was. That word yet? Would you suck a man's cock? No. What about a girl's cock? Possibly. Would a can a guy suck your cock for a while? Jesus. Well, buddy, we're getting into it now. We're already <laughs> down the rabbit hole. What's the difference? <laughs> Mike's Mike's. Tr- sc- I got a gig, I got a, a basic instinct promo for you. This is after drinks with Bill Cosby. You, not into dudes, <laughs> you put wait wait he didn't answer the question okay would you suck him would you let a man suck your cock for your dream girl you're leo in titanic i think he's answering the question right now by silence silence the silence silence slam the man oh puts he's the, cock. <laughs> the man puts the cock in the mouth and he does it when he's asleep oh. it's a wonderful tea oh. party i gotta work on my cosby <laughs> This is a wonderful tea party. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's great. I think Carl's got a chance. He was he's he's he, he borderline getting that big role, Carl. I mean, I'm going to be the gimp in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> well, you already are. <laughs> yeah. No one I knows get, that you weren't the gimp in Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Was, yeah. No I can claim it, right? Okay, so has feminism made men not gentlemen anymore? Okay, well, I Mike's got a clip here we're going to play. Play play one. Play two. I sent you two, I think. Okay. 
I said you one. There should be an Asian chick on the other one. Yeah. You have another one? Yeah. Okay. Play one. Talk. Play two. Talk. And then uh, Jesse will be Girlfriend got bed. stuck. She Ash Betsy. Girlfriend got stuck. She got stuck. She didn't want to throw it. So now she's trying to get guys to come over and help her because we've been seeing all these images of girls in the gym and then a guy like has the nerve to look her way. And it's like, oh my God, he makes me feel so unsafe, all that stuff. This instance, I guarantee you there are guys that saw what was going on and were like, I'm staying out of this. I don't want to be accused and I'm approaching her, all that. And this is what I say about like feminism wrecking men because your natural instinct as a man would just be like, let me go over and help this woman. Yeah. Feminism has Normally. disincentivized men from being gentle. And that's our question. Well, there's a good topic. What do you think, Carl? Carl's the cuck. <laughs> Two guys, one cuck. Uh, I, I agree with the statement is probably mostly true. Yeah. Yeah. When, when, when taking more masculine roles, guys are just less inclined to like feel that inclination to be masculine. Girls well, are, are really. Are guys scared, though, role? too, because of the, the next cup? Don't you don't have to play yet. But the Me Too movement as well. Like, would you be scared to help a woman? As well. Well, gr girls could shame guys. Like we saw, talk about last episode with J Jonah Hill getting shamed for stuff. Like there was just like, he's just kind of sticking up for himself. Guys, guys are afraid of being like, yeah, being like called out, shamed, uh, being called a pervert or made to look a certain way. And like nine times out of 10, they're right. You know, girls are right when their guys are, are, are they called out. But are they, is there this, are those times when it's just you're trying to help? Two single guys. Are we scared to approach a girl because of this? Uh, or ask them out on a date. Period. Oh, what happened? I, I, my, my guess is you're. Oh, you're good. You're good. I would say. I would say for me, no, personally. You're not scared. The days, to adjust most one. of the time. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, you're. You're not scared the to days, approach a girl. Most of the time. Are you scared? Like in this case, like the chick saying someone's at the gym needs help. A hundred percent. I'm going over to help. Regardless, 100%. you don't give a fuck. Hundred percent. Okay, Mike. Carl sees an opportunity to get laid, so yeah. No, I see an opportunity to help another human. See, that's that's the difference. I'm going You're to help. You're seeing it to get to laid. He's seeing to... someone in distress. Yeah, I'm going it's to like help. Lois Lane. I'm going to help. Oh, Carl's a good guy. Yeah, Carl's a good guy. Everyone, everyone loves good. Carl. Everyone loves Carl. He's the best producer in the world. Such a good guy, Carl. A good guy. Pat him on the not, back. Not that old. I, 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 I think all life, those answers just prove that I might not be so such a nice guy. But I mean, in that situation, I'm probably gonna I'm gonna go over and help that person. Okay, Mike. Uh, I would definitely be helpful of anyone, regardless of their gender, uh, if they were stuck in a in a position. I that that can really that can you can you could, someone could die uh, at the gym if their weights are crushing. But them isn't that or, crazy that guys would be scared to go up and help them? Um, no, guys are scared to go up and talk to girls, let alone in general. Them. Okay, good point. That's a good save point. their lives. I mean, I mean, most guys too are are emasculated cucks who have no like hero gene who who would never like step up to the task of actually sacrificing themselves or you know you know i think but do you think that's because of a reason we're getting Times well we're getting bombarded with uh uh media and content too that's telling men not to be men and that's masculinity is toxic and all the hero figures all the we talked about the star wars movies uh all the male figures end up being like Oh, the thing of the past, horrible, oppressive, blah, blah, blah. And then they need the women to save the day. It's always the women that come in and be the heroes. So it's like a whole culture is being shifted towards this idea that women women should rue, rue the day. Rue, no, not rue the day, rule the day. Do you think that affects anything, though? Um, I think it's going to affect, uh, yeah, the way we interact socially with the opposite sex because women don't necessarily want men to be feminine. You know, Not all of them. Being, no, I mean, some some women want to walk all over the men, but they'll never respect them. They'll never have full respect for them. They'll never, um, you know, have that sort of unconditional desire to only be with them or anything like that. They'll be... You think be, women they'll only be, they'll see... They'll be up and spit out. As people say, males are alpha males. Women only seek that or there are... I think women want to be with an alpha. I think some women find it challenging because they want to be the alpha dominant, but then... But at the end of the day, they don't. I think they're being fed a bunch of bullshit. You, you think know? there's only black and white, alpha male and I think, I think no, no, but no, I think there's just there's proclivities, there's tendencies. You know, it's like not not a hundred percent this way or the other way. There's a range of it. But you're saying the majority. I think the majority. I think it's like there's biological markers. Carl, do you concur? History, history tells us this. 
Me, I always have a different spin on things. You know me. Uh, That's what I I'm think, asking. I think women like masculinity. I think they like men to be assertive. I think they like to be approached and all that. Women don't like men that are rapey. <laughs> Plain and simple. If you're a creep, you're a creep. Now, what happens is a lot of men that are trying to be masculine and trying to be overly aggressive are creepy. That's, so there's a point that's, there. That's the there's a fair so, point. So it's not that the guys don't like, but those I guys think crazy. See, Carl is right. Those guys just don't have any game because they're so Agreed. because so I, they're so re- used to being rejected by women. They don't really know how to approach them. Yeah, I don't think the woman's. I don't think the woman is put off by the guy because he's masculine and he's assertive and stuff like that. They're put off because he's a creep. Right, and he could be a creep in any body. He just happens to be in that kind of body. The yeah, question but you to know, this video though is: Do you think feminism has stopped men from being gentlemen? I think I think a lot of men are now more um, scared. Well, scared. I, scared is probably the right word, or more. But those people that are like those men that are going to complain about that probably have that underlying creepiness. Well, nice guys are nice guys and don't have a problem being a nice guy. But here's, the, here's, here's the reality, that's though. That's a good point, though. Is that women do feel this sense of empowerment to call out guys who are checking them out. Meanwhile, there used to be kind of just like an understanding that women, women going who are very attractive, with really nice bodies, who are going to the gym with these Lululemon pants or fucking little short shorts and little cutoff tops, like they're going to get checked out by men. They know they're going to get checked out by men. They're going to the gym looking good. They want to look good. So they're going to get checked out. And then if you're calling out a guy, well, you're staring at me, blah, 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 blah. And I get why they can feel uncomfortable while they're working out. I've seen I've seen scenarios where I've seen girls like knockouts walk into the gym and these creepy dudes kind of just like like stare and look and stuff. But these girls kind of still understand the fact dude. they still kind of understand the fact like, I, listen, these guys aren't doing any me. Any I trouble. don't act. They're on just it, looking. Though. They're not causing any trouble. I'm not going to cause a big scene. I don't act on it. You can look. But you can't, you know, but I, I get, you know, women having that issue. But at the same time, um, I mean, it's 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 like it's like asking uh, a lion not to roar, you know, or an elephant not to stomp. I don't know. It, it's kind of in our nature to look at beautiful women unless you're Carl. <laughs> All right. No, no. <laughs> 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 No, 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 I don't mean that like that, but I mean, you know, I just I think it's a natural proclivity for men to look at, especially beautiful, curvy, you know, great shape women and, and, and tights and leotards and stuff. I mean, he's saying that it's OK to look, just don't be creepy about it. Hey, but I'm saying it's a fine line, you yeah, know, it definitely is a fine line. It's I a agree. fine line. Like, and that who it's decides like a three what's second creepy. rule. You can't look for more than three seconds. Yeah. It's like when you drop food on the floor, who decides what's creepy and what's not? She does. Why, though? Why wouldn't she? Everybody else's judgment's she's, different. If she, My, yeah, me, if a glance it, like thing. this could like, be creepy, though, Carl. hundred percent, it could be to the to that to that particular person can find that creepy because of whatever reasons and whatever issues and whatever sentiments that person has, right? But like when you say like when they go to the gym with Lululemons and tank tops and they ex- they they have to expect that they're going to look at have. Have you guys ever looked at a girl and went, oh, my God, that girl is so beautiful because she has those giant fake eyelashes? No. No. So why do so many girls wear them? For them. They wear them because they feel good It's the wearing. block the cum that drips okay. down there. Maybe. I think Maybe the eyelashes look Maybe. stupid. There you go. And you could tell every single lip. girl, but they're all still going to wear them because they like to wear them. The girl wears the Lululemons because she feels good wearing them. Uh-huh. Yeah, but we like the way, you know, she knows he looks good in them. That's why. Oh, I mean, that's and like the eyelashes is like a, a weird like it's like lipstick. It's like I don't care. Like girl's pretty. She's pretty. She's exactly. wearing that stuff. But she's pretty. She's pretty. pretty. I mean, it's not like it's you know, it's not like it's 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 not asking for attention. You know, she's not like doing something to subdue her. Look, if girls really didn't want any attention at the gym, they would wear frumpy jogging pants and stuff. And look like a bum. I do wear hair. that. And, That's and what I, I wear to the gym. I, I don't I, give a shit if anyone's looking at me at the gym. I, just, right. I, I think, look like a bum. I, I, I look think homeless you, when I, I go to the gym. I think if you asked a lot of girls that do dress like that, they would still tell you that they still get that that yeah, attention they that they're not yeah, looking they for. Yeah, they do. I mean, it's, it, it's, hard, it's hard to paint everything with a big brush, right? Like, ah. there's going to be some girls that do like it. There's going to be some women that don't like it. To each his own? I mean, in a way, and I mean, it's... But I think it's like you get, like, from an early age, girls get, like, uh, cat-called and, like, hit on by guys. So, like, 
So like it's kind of yeah, like they get they get yeah. used to it. They learn how to tune it out. I remember walking with my cousin in Yorkdale Mall years and years ago. I was younger, and she was uh, in her twenties, like in her prime. She's a very beautiful girl, and I could not believe what guys were like, how they would stare and look and comment. Come up to her, yelling out things from afar, like just like really like, and she was just like ignored it all, like it wasn't even happening, like totally was. They able block to it out because they gotten used to it. Well, She's so used to it. Desensitized. It like, desensitized didn't matter to her. Didn't care. She. Did, it was like, did not pay any mind to it at all, like at all. It was. It was really fascinating to see, and I was like, that's that's something. As a boy, you're just not used to. I bet you, you know, it was okay. a topic of conversation, if not complaint. In a room full of her female peers. You don't know that though. I don't, but I feel like it probably is. Like we're not going to hear that. She might not do. She might not react in public. She might not have friends as hot as she is who are used to that, and then it looks like she's bragging by saying it. You know what I mean? Maybe. I think it's just like women. It's just like you know, like anything you put out in the wild, you figure out ways to survive. You figure out ways to get through all that, and you just like you telling a girl that. No, you're just going to we're going to tell men to not be pervy in this way and expect that is uh, a hot girl works, walks. You got to you're probably most likely looking. you got to be fucking prepared as a hot chick. You got to be prepared for the pervy weirdos. But at the same time, you know what? Give them a little give them a fair breathing. room. like, don't fucking because maybe you're going to get stuck in a position where you're you got weights bearing down on you and you need some help and. uh It'll be there. Play the next one. I don't know if it's going to add anything. I can't remember what it is, but I want to see if it the adds days, anything to most this of the, time, the day, most of the time, you would wait for someone to make the first move. It might be on the first date. It might be the third date, whatever. It right. could be the man. It could be the woman. But now, all my friends have noticed that the man has stopped making the first move. All my girlfriends are like, they're waiting. It's the third date, fourth date, a week later. He hasn't gone in for the kiss. He doesn't do any touching or anything. And I've asked my dude friends that are single. Right. And they are like, you don't know where a woman's going to go with that story. Where I ain't touching nobody. And it kind of, it sucks because the Me Too movement is so strong and so, so powerful for the people that need it. But it shouldn't ruin the maturity that we should have within intimacy and relationship. Oh, there's a point. What do you think of that, Carl? Uh, valid. Again, I think... I, I think there's bad people out there. I think there's creepy people. I think there's bad people. I think there's bad people. There's bad people bad. everywhere. Yeah, there's bad people with bad intentions and stuff like that. I don't think that... I like to think of myself as a nice guy. I have no problem walking so up... So does everybody else. Okay? I like. I have no problem walking up to um, a woman in a bar or at a restaurant or at a social gathering of some sort, introducing myself, striking up conversation. And you don't feel creepy or you're imposing yourself on I don't feel like I'm being creepy. I well, you hope, probably are. I hope that I'm not. Uh, I mean, I mean, when you when you're 48 years old and you're approaching 22 year old girls. Well, I'm I'm not approaching 22 year old girls. Oh. How low do you go? I mean, I I I'm very bad at telling age. I'll talk to anybody that draws my attention. Which one? Anyone. But what's what, what's a what's a cutoff for you? She tells you she's 19, and you like saying, "Okay, I'm sorry, I can't." Go yeah, ahead. that's too young. How, yeah, what's, I agree what's, with what's, you. What's you can't keep a conversation with a 19 year old. Oh. What's a cutoff? I I mean, it it changes for different things, right? Twenty five with four kids and divorce is different than twenty five and going to university and drinking every night. Okay, okay, okay. That's a Let's, different twenty five. Okay. Which year one old. would you say that's yes to? Okay. That's a different twenty five. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you a scenario, okay? Wow. I'm gonna give you a scenario. <laughs> this whole episode Shit. is just, <laughs> just on Carl. Just, I'm dying over here. Okay, I'll give you a scenario, okay, Carl? She's, how, do you, how many people see this show? She's she's a twenty two year old Ukrainian refugee. Okay, she's okay. seen like her country get torn apart. Both her parents were blown up. Her head's her father's head rolled onto the street, and she saw it. Wow, that's messed up. And then the Russian soldiers were like playing soccer with it. What? And then she had to like go like she had to go into like a a box. She had to put her in a box to get ship her. And they shipped her on a plane to North America, where she now lives at the Chuck E. Cheese. No, what's what what is it? at the Fun Zone? She lives at the Fun Zone inside a whack a mole machine. Okay, but she's twenty two. She's had she's obviously gone through a lot. What do you say to her? That's extreme. Well, I mean, I'm, can I, you breathe? I can still say hi. And then if she's I, lived a life I'm, crazier I'm, than you have. I'm getting all this in the first five minutes. I'm probably like, hey, yeah, I hope you have a good night. Oh, he's just bouncing. 
You don't want to help. I mean, that's a that's a lot to unpack right there. But she's fucking literally because she's, she's in also a box. perfect ten though. She's like twenty two and she's fucking. It doesn't matter. Dime doesn't matter. Carl doesn't want the baggage. Oh wow, she's went through too much. That you, Carl's. Where's your heart? Her father's head Carl can't help came her. Came off. Well, and rolled onto the street. I don't know. I don't know his life. He can, I don't think he can help her in that instance. Mike, oh. what are you doing in there? What are you doing there? This girl oh, walks up. Got you. Yeah, this girl walks up to you and tells you this story. What are you doing? I'm saying, hey, let's go back to my place and talk about Fucking it. Fucking thing sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, let's go and talk about it. There you okay, go. Let's oh. have a conversation about it and let's find let's your. Let's grab brain. a coffee. What if? What if? What if she finds that creepy? You're inviting her back to your place right off the hop. What if she I mean, finds that creepy? Her Do you think you're being creepy? Her head's dead. Her dead ha- uh, dad's head came off and rolled down the street, and she's gonna find me creepy. Come on, mm. come on, that's not gonna happen. Come on, Carl, come up with a better scenario. <laughs> Yours, yeah, <laughs> both scenarios. Hard to come up with scenarios to top that, right? So obviously, yeah. I mean, a girl like that, she's seen a lot, been through a lot. That's a maturity level. That's a maturity level. What I'm trying to get out of Carl is that girl's been through a lot, and it's not the same as you're like you're saying to a degree. A girl's just had you know gone through high school, just gone through college, maybe gone through a little bit of dick. Hasn't she's, gone through that. You just told him he was a Russian in a box. What are you talking about? I mean, I'm saying that's what your girl, that girl's like a maturity level is. She's like 38, 40. You know, because she's been through so much. The girl from Ukraine went through in a box. Her dad's head roll off. I might not be the best person for her to give her the support through the I don't trauma think that so. she's going through. I don't think so. I think you're right. But, but I'm probably not the creepy guy. <laughs> that uh, <laughs> Creepy guy? The creepy guys are the uh, the Russians who blew her father's head off. Our guest is coming soon. <laughs> we got Jesse coming in soon. Okay. Do are you want to wrap it? this conversation or do you still want to talk about the Russian in the box? Meanwhile, Carl's going to satanic rituals. No, he said no to the ritual. Having drinks with Bill Cosby. Wouldn't do that either. No, he said he would do that. No. I got a yes on that, buddy. No, he wouldn't. Dr- oh, wait. No, he said no to Bill oh, no, Cosby. Bill Cosby, right. He said no. He said no. He said no. He wouldn't rat out OJ. That was it. That was it. He would rat out OJ. Wouldn't rat out OJ. Or would. He'd jerk off with Louis C.K. Yeah, well. And he'd be cuckolded by The Rock. Yeah. He would attend a satanic ritual. Oh, he would attend it. Yes. Even if it was kids getting killed. That was yeah. added after the end. That well, would, that's that what happens said, in satanic rituals. But let's see if Jesse, our musical guest, will do the same. All right. We had come back with our guest, Jesse. Who's uh, going to perform live first time live. in yep. studio for in us. In studio. Looking Stay forward tuned. to seeing Jesse. Me too. Stay tuned for this. Jesse's coming right up. <laughs> All right, we're back, everybody. We're back. Hey, guys. Nagger's number one podcast bringing you all the local talented musicians you can ever want and hope for. And this, today we got a real gem. Um, sorry. Explain to where we met him. I'm well, going to send like it to his you. name in out. front of me. Jesse. Jesse. Start from the top. Start God from the top. I'm going to send it to you. I have another second. <laughs> Oh, good. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Mike, Mike, uh, Mike's in charge of the notes, and uh, he always does a great job. Well, I was also in charge of getting him situated as well. <laughs> I have too many jobs is the problem. Yeah, this is true. I will forgive you. Anyways, Jesse, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, local musician. We met at Utopia Lounge, which is a, a Mike and I's local haunt. Uh, we, we tend to gravitate there for a couple of, uh, couple of pops once in a while. And it's a good hang, and we caught Jesse playing. I think it was a Bowie song that really caught my ear. That is cor- that is correct. That is correct. Sorry, I'm not on my drop. And uh, he did a fantastic, fantastic job. It's amazing. And that's yes, what, it is. That's okay. what caught our ear, and we were like, we waited till you finished your set, or at least took a break, and then we were like, we got to get this guy on the show. It's amazing. Yes, sir. So now, um, Jesse, you come joining us, and and I think you're all set up here. You brought your guitar. You're gonna be playing some. You're gonna be playing some tunes for us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm yeah. stoked, man. So, how long have you been playing music? Oh my goodness, uh, I think I got my first bass guitar when I was in high school. Uh, quickly, kind of got bored with that. Started playing um, electric, and then at a certain point, started doing like the solo acoustic thing. It's been yeah, it's been about probably about twelve years or so doing the the solo stuff. It's been yeah, fun. yeah, nice. yeah. 
and that's so w- when you were a kid and you were getting into it in high school, like what were the bands you were listening to? Who was that? Who was that? That who was that inspired you? That one like I'm gonna be a musician. Blink 182, pretty much. <laughs> oh my god! 100%. You know what's funny? I'm surprised. I, yeah. You had the, yeah, I'm surprised you're like brave enough to say that. I was gonna say. I got a feeling he's gonna say some 41 or Blink 182. Did you grow up in reason. Fort Erie? Did you go to Fort Erie High School? Uh, I went to Ridgeway. Okay. Yeah, I well, went to that, Ridgeway. Christmas that explains Beach. a little bit of it. Oh yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Do you want me to, to read his little bio he sent us? <laughs> if you want to read his little bio he sent us, it's yeah, pretty funny. The, Mike, Mike, Mike. Yeah, Mike. This was actually the best, probably best, most thought out bio we've received. That and uh, remember, uh, Fort Erie Muscle had a great bio. Fort Erie well. Muscle had a good bio as well. So I'm gonna read this because it does deserve. Uh, it's uh, kudos. Yes. I grew up in Ridgeway. I also lived in Calgary, Banff, Whistler, Vancouver, and technically in Squamish for a bit on a cruise ship. A real Olympic Canadian. Olympic accommodations right. are not as awesome as they sound. <laughs> oh. I, I wrote a song that was on the radio in, in Alberta. I used, I used to... I used to... I used to. Should have okay been there, buddy? I, no, no, no. I'm reading it. I used to, used to run to an open mic in Alberta. I once wrote... And sang a hook for a rapper out of Chicago. I found ten thousand dollars in a gas station once. <laughs> I won a contest and got a pair of socks named after me. I worked at the Olympics in two thousand ten. What, what what were these socks that you got named after you? It was it was this weird contest online. Oh, this is true. I thought it was a joke. No, no. That's I, why I love the bio more. <laughs> <laughs> you think he was making shit up? Yeah, I really yeah. did. No, I'm, no. I'm, so, I'm assuming uh, everything you told us in the bio was real, right? That, that's all 100% Buddy, real. I find four and five leaf clovers all the time. I ride a motorcycle. The thing I love most in life is jumping out of airplanes, which I know from talking to you earlier. And, of course, because I'm from a small town, I have to mention that I caught a seven-pound bass in Lake Erie. That's pretty. All those things are pretty unique and expensive. And imp- impressive. I, You're uh, not elaborating in any way. No, no. I, I just figured I'd give you guys the short form. And <laughs> I mean, I was I, I read that and I said, Mike, this guy's Forrest Gump. Yeah. He's had quite the life. I uh, I definitely enjoy living life as much as I can. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of different things that I've been blessed to be able to do Ex- for sure. Except in the period of your life when you were listening to Blink 182. <laughs> At that point, you were like, I fucking hate myself. <laughs> and I'm going to torture myself with this shitty music. Right? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. No, I, was, I was a big I'm fan kidding. of uh, big fan of like the earlier stuff. Yeah. Yeah. When it when it started to get into. The, uh, the you don't have to justify your small thing. Oh, no, it's all good. I was yeah. also a big fan of the Beach Boys. That's not everybody's oh, taste either. We so. love the Beach Boys. My favorite <laughs> album is Pet Sounds, Sounds of Pet all Sounds time. Is a great album. Yeah, absolutely. I saw oh, Brian best. Wilson perform it live in its entirety oh really eh? it was wonderful i got goosebumps that is awesome you know what i you know what i go you don't get though there's there's a version of a song hold on to your ego and then it's uh um yeah it's, it's different. also another name and they and they changed the they song changed it due to some reason i can't it uh, eludes me right now but yes you are absolutely right hold on to my ego on the is that the original one yes uh, hold on to your ego is the original, original and then they and have then another they version to... um there's got to be an answer there must be an answer. Carl. There must be. No, that's the name of the song. There must be an answer. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> there must be. I think that's what goes. Must be an answer. I think that's how it goes. Winner. Mikey wins. I think that's it. I think that's it. But I love the Beach Boys and Brian I, Wilson's. Uh, I love Brian Wilson's Beach Boys. I don't Brian, yes. Love, or Mike Lowe. And I like that Beach. I like that Bare Naked Lady song about Brian Wilson. I like the movie about Brian Wilson with John Cusack. I, I like movies it. about bare naked ladies. Ah. <laughs> no, you're inside. <laughs> I think Crazy Carl is right. Half of Carl's <laughs> filmography is softcore <laughs> porn. <laughs> Carl is a real actor, by the way. That's awesome. I'm a real actor, Jack. Why don't you fucking have that clip? <laughs> yeah, I'm a real actor. I should. We should. We say it so much. I'm sorry. God damn it. I'll have it ready for next show. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, are we ready to get right into? Uh, let's hear one song and let's. Uh, yeah, I'm. I want it. I like. We were just doing a little sound check. It was fucking dope. It sounded really good. Sounded really oh, good. Thank you guys. So yeah, well, what are you gonna play for us first? Well, let's pick a song. Do we want to pick a song or let him pick? Let's go with that. No. He said the list. We had we had a pick songs picked. Okay, Carl, tell him your song first. We'll go with Carl's first. Hey, I I went right to the top of the list. Uh, you were meant for me by Jewel. Okay, Stato. let's hear it. I'd love it. All right. Let's hear first Jesse with Jewel. Good talk on Mike. Thanks. 
Sound good. Yeah, it does. I hear the clock at 6 a.m. Feels so far from where I've been. And I got my eggs, I got my pancakes too. Got my maple syrup. Everything but you and I break the yolks and make a smiley face. Kind of like it in my brand new place Why spots off the meal Don't leave the keys in the door Well, I never put my towel on the floor anymore Cause dreams last for so long Even after you're gone And I know that you love me And soon you will see You were meant for me I was meant for you Called my mama, she was out for a while Consoled a cup of coffee, it didn't talk So I picked up a paper, it was more bad news, more Hearts being broken, people being used, but I'm a few in rain. I saw a movie, it just wasn't the same, cause it was happy, y'all. Oh, I was sad and made me miss it. Oh, so bad, cause dreams last for so long. I know that you love me and soon you will see you were meant for me and I was meant for you go about my business doing fine besides what I say if I had you on the line same old story now not much to say Hearts are broken every day Brush my teeth, put the cap back on I know you hate it when I leave the light on So I up a book, turn the sheets down, take a deep breath and a good look around, put on my pages as I hop into bed, I'm half alive but I feel mostly dead, and I try to tell myself it'll be alright, I just shouldn't think anymore tonight, cause dreams last for so long. I know that you love me and soon you will see you were meant for me and I was meant for you you were meant for me and I was meant for you Excellent. Excellent. Thank it's you amazing. so much. Thank you, guys. It's Thank amazing. You. That was really good. That was really, really good. I like how you made it your own there. Yeah. Oh, thanks. You know? Thanks. Sounds great. Um, I even think you should... How do you pick a song? How do you yeah, decide like... that that's the one you want to cover? Honestly, I've, I play a lot of stuff that I also enjoy listening to. Okay. Um, sometimes I'll hear something. I'll be like, oh, like that sounds pretty cool. I think I could probably play it. Give it a go. And yeah, there's a lot of songs in my uh, needs work list. I'll put it that way. Are, are you self, <laughs> Are you self-taught? Yeah, yeah. I had uh, one guitar lesson um, at one point in time. I uh, learned how to play a Pink Floyd song. And then, um, yeah, once I, once I learned how that I, or once I realized that I wanted to play more kind of like campfire acoustic music, I okay. uh, started learning chords. And then now all I have to do is just see the letter. And if I know what that chord is, then I'm good to go. Yeah. Uh, That's it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty awesome. I, 
I've had people request songs before, and I'm like, ooh, like I know that song. I've never really tried playing it before, and I'll look it up. If I know all the chords, I'll, I'll give it a go. It doesn't always turn out great, but sometimes you end up with another song on your list, so it's pretty nice. Do you write any of your own music? So I have. Um, I used to write quite a bit. Uh, yeah. More recently, I haven't been. Uh, to be honest with you, about a year before the pandemic happened, um, I stopped playing live for the most part. Um, Fucking wanted pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a year before the pandemic you decided. Yeah, yeah. Really? I, um, You're just sick of it? I kind of hit this point where I felt like I was playing the same stuff over and over again. Yeah, um, plateau. Yeah, exactly. At the time, I was playing in bars, restaurants, uh, retirement homes. I had my own business where I had a, a specialized music program for people with disabilities. Um, yeah, and I think I just kind of burnt myself out to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I kept up with the business part of things, but... But it uh, became like a job, like, whereas when you get into music, it's, you're not looking at it as like, you know, this hard, it's grueling thing, you know? Yeah, it's it's yeah. like a thing you do because you love it. Yeah, for sure. And th- and then there's there's another part of it where, like, it's, ni- it's nice when people yell at a request or something, right? But Yeah, when you get kind of annoyed though too, right? Yeah, honestly, man, when you can't deliver and they're like, then they Fuck start you, to Fuck you, play upset. Wu-Tang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you don't know any Wu Tang. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, or it's like I'm telling you though, dude. If you learned even half of Wu Tang's like catalog, <laughs> you would fucking clean up. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it'd, it'd be, be so sweet. cool to hear you play a Wu Tang track on your acoustic guitar. <laughs> it's one of the you things know? that I'm actually. So I'm a, I'm a big country hip- fed white boy playing Wu Tang on the guitar. <laughs> I just fucking love it, man. It's like it's a. I can sell tickets to that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get I, you booked for the next event. If you lose Wu-Tang, we got you headlining in an event. There we'll, we go. We'll promote it. Yeah, I, I actually, it's something that I have been working on more recently. Um, I grew up like a really big hip-hop fan as well. Uh, Wonderful. Mostly like pop, or pop, punk, pop, punk, and, and hip-hop for yeah, me yeah. I was growing up. Well, you're in the 90s, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it's something I've been trying to do because I there's a ton of different songs that I love listening to, like rapping along with, like that kind of thing. Yeah. But it's not. Uh, and then you guys got to convert it, like make it your own co- acoustic version People of it. People love that shit. Yeah, they yeah. fucking so. love that shit. So yeah. to zero discussion, on our last show, we had a topic. Who's better, Ice Cube or Biggie? Oh, Biggie. Done. Next yeah. topic. Yeah. There's not much more discussion Thanks, needed on that. Thanks, so. Carl. <laughs> that's great i'm just saying <laughs> so yes that was a bit doing we had last show and uh but yeah like so I, I i think it's like a, a unique talent in a in a in a gift to be able to just to pick up a guitar and make music anytime you know you want it's like who needs a portable speaker bluetooth speaker you know what i mean you could probably yeah. just pick yeah, up we a got ukulele Jesse. yeah and you could sing and fucking play a tune, and like that's that's amazing. I wish I could do that. It's it, like a superpower, bro. It, it's it's something it's that a panty remover. Like <laughs> it's something you probably that get tons of pussy, right? Am I right? You know what's hilarious, man? I Absol- want... Absolutely not. It, no, it's... I don't believe you. For I don't one. believe it, it for a second. second. This is the I, modest I under... rock star here. No, I understand where you're coming from, and it's actually a question I get quite a bit from people. Yeah. But to be honest, like. I'm playing music for people, right? And like normally, in between my break or whatever, if I step outside and you talk to us like, too about David Bowie, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right? Like I mean, we're killing, yeah, like, we're killing, we're, kill- we're cockblocking this dude. <laughs> but it's it's not just that. It, like there's also just you know people be there enjoying the music. They'll have a couple of pints and they go home. And so yeah, I don't always connect with people like while I'm playing shows. But, but do you ever like like spot a chick in the stands or in the in the crowd, right? It, and then you make you, eye, you, make, you like eye, you lock eyes and you gaze into her like the song's written for her. Oh, chicken That's the move. It, Are you not doing it, that move? It's it's happened before, but it's. Uh, and yeah. what happens after that happens? I, I've I've walked away with some numbers a few times. There you sure. go. Yeah, yeah. That's what we yeah. want to hear. But it's hear. but it's That's not. It's definitely about. not as. Uh, <laughs> Are you, are you married? Is this what we're, are we being coy because you have a girl and you're married? Or? No, no. It's I cut just, the shit. No, it's just that, that I'm being 100% honest. And I, I don't are know. You, uh, do, you part, do you take part in the lifestyle? <laughs> oh, jeez. The lifestyle? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of, lot of this, people in this, pe- pe- this community are more polyamorous. Oh, yeah, yeah. I get what you mean. I, no, 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 man. I'm, I'm a pretty monogamous guy. Like, monogamous uh, straight Good for you. Male. Like Jonah Hill. Yeah, yeah. Like Jonah. 
Yeah, no, I just one I, pussy. I have time. a dude. I have enough chaos in my life. I I do not need to add. Women can any, be chaotic as well. Yeah. That. How many women do you need, Carl? Yeah. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's but I but Which I imagine though I imagine though this line of work it's not it's not uh, it's not something that girls don't find appealing. Oh, they love it. I imagine like oh, there's. Yeah, there's definitely. And you ever that. do the move where you're like, "Hey, baby, wrote a song for you." <laughs> you ever do that, and it's the same song for every girl? No, see, I play Blink One Eighty Two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, exactly. Come back to like my a, place. Like a B side that no one's heard. Yeah, exactly. No, uh, I I've definitely written songs for girls in the past and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you, most you, of them have been shelved at this point. <laughs> you, you remember any of them? No, no, man. I, he's oh. big, he's lying. Been, he's full of shit. He knows. No, I I swear to God, it was probably about. <laughs> Probably about eight years ago now is the last time I wrote like a song for somebody, and I don't can't even remember the chords or how it goes anymore. Oh man, because yeah. we always said like the best art, the best music comes out of pain, like pain. really like dark, deep pain, like yeah, heartbreak, loss, you or know, drug use, drug yeah. use, yeah. which so, is like yeah, it is like a loved one because like you can be you can fall in love and f- cast. You know that spell, that hair on. <laughs> you know that you put lady that hair on up your ass. That lady of the you night, hair on. on that takes many souls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So does cocaine. It's a hell of a drug. Yet, yeah. yet it is still pervasive. Yeah. That fentanyl. <laughs> yeah. Um. Can we play a song and then get back to her? As like much as like, as, as like much as the lifestyle, pick. almost. Much as the lifestyle. Can I do my pick now? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? For what? My oh. pick for the next oh, song, it's your and then pick. we'll okay. continue with the interview. Right, my pick. Fine. Okay. Yeah, I want to bring it up a couple notches. You don't have to play the full song either. You can do like uh, a... I want to hear it, though, because I've never heard anyone okay. play this with an acoustic guitar. Can you play uh, Peggy Sue, Buddy Holly? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, I want to hear this with a Can you do like a motion. slow version? No. Oh, oh, that's what I didn't want. I want to hear him fucking okay, rock okay, out okay, here. Okay. If you knew Peggy Sue, then you'd know why I feel blue about Peggy, about Peggy Sue. Oh, well, I love you, gal. Yes, I love you, Peggy Sue. Peggy Sue, Peggy Sue. Oh, how my heart yearns for you Oh, my Peggy My Peggy Sue Oh, well, I love you, gal And I need you, Peggy Sue Peggy Sue, Peggy Sue Pretty, 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 pretty Peggy Sue Oh, my Peggy Oh, well, I love you, gal, and I need you, Peggy Sue. And I love you, Peggy Sue, with a love so rare and true. Oh, my Peggy, my Peggy Sue. Oh, well, I love you, gal. Yes, I want you, Peggy Sue. Oh, well, I love you, gal. Yes, I want you, Peggy Sue. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That was really fun. I, I was, it's amazing. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Did you enjoy that, OJ? It's amazing. Thank I loved it. Thank you. That was really good. Uh, wow, live music's just such a fun. That's great. So cool, right? Such a great. It is. Great... It's, it's a different, whole different feel. Yeah. Now I want to have more musicians on the show. No shit, performing live. We've had performing live. Past. Oh, you guys definitely should. There's there's a lot of really talented musicians in this area. Um, We've had some yeah. talented ones on. They haven't been on uh, live in the studio. For us. We we started the show during the pandemic when people weren't coming into studio. Really, Correct. we were doing Zoom yeah. shots, and they weren't performing music of, over their Zoom. Well, that wouldn't have been that it certainly wouldn't have the same fidelity. Yeah, we had Matt Keegan. Yeah. Do you, we, do you we, know right Matt now, Keegan? Matt Keegan. He opened for the Beach Boys, oddly enough. Oh, really? Eh? Yeah, okay. he's a local producer. He owns his own place. We had DJ Shub on. We've had some Shub, good, We've had some really good music. Real good nice. musical guests. Shub is awesome. He is yeah. unreal, man. And a friend of ours. And a good friend. 
That's yeah, awesome. Good, good collaborator. Love Shub. And uh, this has been excellent. This is great. Um, um, do we have a game or anything played? No, anything? just the music. No, just you, the music we wanted to hear. Any more questions for him, <laughs> Carl? You got any questions for him? What 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 it would be your most favorite song to listen to or and or perform? Oh, two parter. That's a two parter. Yeah, and that that's honestly that's a really really hard question to answer. Um, not as hard as Big Ear Ice Cube. Way to uh, fucking stump our guests, <laughs> Carl. Sorry. I think <laughs> really slow. I think. I you think the show up there, oh. Carl. You can say anything. We're not. I think New, New Orleans is sinking by the hip is probably one of my favorite oh, songs yeah, to, that's to, to perform. Great. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as my test. <laughs> my favorite I hate song. The hip, no <laughs> Mike hates yeah, Do you? Okay. Well, you know what? They're one of those groups where it seems like everybody seems to love them, but the people that don't, they really don't. <laughs> now, the last time I saw you, the yeah. last time I saw you, yeah. I asked you to learn a song. Do you remember what it was? Oh my god! And you weren't drinking; no. you were drinking a coffee. So you, oh, can't, you can't play. Better I asked you. To, I asked you to learn any, really, any song by the Violent Femmes. I thought you should. You should learn a Violent Femmes track. I actually, I, I'm being 100 percent honest. I don't even remember that, but I'm adding it in right now. Oh. <laughs> I'll throw in. Well, throw you know what? Some. You should send us that track, and we'll play it another time. How long? Yeah, how, yeah. How, how long can it take you to like learn a song? Can you just like pull it up and like try to play it? So if they're pretty simple songs, if I knew the thing is, I have to know the lyrics. Oh, he's punching it in right now. He's not bullshitting. I have to know whether or not. Um, yeah, I might be able to do something here. Uh, like right now. Possible. Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, shit. See, I want to see if he can. I, I love, um, I love the violent femmes, and no one plays talent. them enough. That's talent. That's just talent. to be. And, uh, and uh, if I heard someone play them live, I mean, that'd be a guy I go and see. Before you play this song, I do have one question. So you are a skydiver, or are you jump rope? Yeah, place? yeah. What's I love more it. of a rush? Because I've got an answer from another musician that performing live is better than sex. Yes, and we've we heard that. Someone. Yep. Okay. Someone? Now jumping out of a plane or playing live. What's more of a rush? So jumping out of a plane is more of a rush. And we have a saying in skydiving that uh, skydiving isn't better than sex, but it's getting pretty damn close. Is sex better than playing live? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when is sex not better? <laughs> I heard the opposite from another fellow we musician. We have heard that. He we said performing heard. live in front of a crowd was better than having sex. He must not be having that great of sex, I guess. Oh, <laughs> that's interesting. Or his live shows are just fucking oh, Yeah, that, that's, that's also that true. true. <laughs> May, maybe his live shows are next. I don't have does, a button that says, I think my crazy Mike is right. <laughs> <laughs> he, he does play... Uh, Electric guitar with a vibrator. That gentleman. Oh, that Matt was the oh, one. Oh, Matt was, was the one that said. We've that. had Anvil on, by the way. Do you know who Anvil is? I do Which know I'd who ra- Anvil is. I'd rather yeah. listen to Anvil than the Hip. Yeah, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> He's not a hip real player. Canadian. Group. Okay, but do you think you can play this track? Do you think you can play that song right now? What are we playing? Uh, Violent Femmes. Tell them the song. I'm gonna try. But no one's gonna hold you to the it. Sun. Blister in the Sun. Wow. Okay. Uh, oh, this that's is, a huge one. It's yeah. a big hit. That is the biggest hit. If you can't get all the way through, if you want, I can help you sing it. I know the song by heart. That'd be so, interesting. so that's the big thing. So if I know the song and I know like the yeah. cadence and how it goes, then it makes it easier for me to just pick it up and play it. The but cadence. if I don't, if I don't understand so kind of how the song's supposed to go, right? Like then, yeah. No, that's added up. That's added up. Sorry. Um, all right. Blister in the sun. So let me see. Oh. I like that this you is started. Just so... I'll, I'll get it. When I'm a walking, I strut myself, and I'm so strung out. I'm my as a cat, I just might stop to check you out. Let me go on like a blister in the sun. Let me go on. Big hands, I know you're the one. I stay in my sheets I don't even know why My girlfriend She's at the end She is starting to cry Let me go on Like a blister In the sun Let me go on Big hands I know you're the one I'll do a little of that. So. 
That was really Thank good. You. I just picked that one up right off the hop. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, actually add that into my list right now because oh, that. Oh, you like that? that? Yeah, that's oh, nice. Oh man, dude, they have they have a bunch of good tracks that would sound great. Oh, on great group. You know what would be really crazy? Can you play Wu Tang? <laughs> I mean, if again you can, and again. So again I, and again. I definitely, I definitely made a bit of an attempt this week to. Uh, oh, like, we gotta like, hear it now. Can we just but hear what you tried? No one's judging the, you. The attempt failed miserably. Like every single different song that I was picking, I'm like, oh shit, oh, like this is it's not gonna work. Because he's scared to it say is, the lyrics. It is. You can that, just say well, N word. <laughs> no, no, that is not happening. <laughs> gangsta, gangsta. I had somebody ask me to play uh, "Give Me the Loot" at someone's birthday the one time, and I, I started, I started to try and learn how to play it, and I was literally, I messaged him, I'm like, I can't sing half the song, so I was like, I'm gonna have to uh, pass on that one. Yeah. That's funny. It is a little tricky, but you can make it work. You gotta just, you gotta change the, uh, maybe say "Wigger." <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Carl, got anything from my man here? Okay, so let's play us out with one last track. What's your go-to? Oh, no, I was going to do Dock uh, on you the Bay. You want to do Dock on the Bay? You want to play it on Dock on the Bay? That's what I thought we were going to close with. Sure. Or so, whatever. Uh, or whatever. You I, I happen to have. Fans. I don't know. I wanted that one. You picked the live fans. I know. I but I, yeah, now I want <laughs> <laughs> I've got a song, actually. Um that uh, I really enjoy playing. It's a country song. Um, oh, you know. Okay. All right. But <laughs> some of our fans like have country you, music. Have you guys? But have you guys ever heard uh, uh, Wheeler Walker Jr. before? Never heard of him. Never heard of him. I'm up for no. new things. Fuck All right. It. Have a good Here, energy. you guys ready for hey, this? Yeah. For this? Woo, if Wheeler you guys, Walker Jr. Everybody. Okay, I, I promise you guys, you're gonna like this song. Okay. I hate country music. This is the, one it. of it's the only country I music too. songs that I play, except for like real old school stuff, the outlaw stuff. But first of all, Carl, oh, you, got outlaw, Jesse. To, you got anything to plug before we move along here? Nothing to plug. Just support everybody that's on strike, the uh, writers and the actors. We don't know if they're still on strike. Actually, I, I just picked up a book that a uh, local artist, uh, Kat, she just wrote this book called uh, Whimsical Outbreak. Um, uh, just reading it. You get a review in a future episode. Is it about a pandemic that uh, kills everybody? It's about a zombie apocalypse at, like a Disneyland. Whoa. Nice, I like that. Uh, Mike, anything? Uh, nothing to announce. Jesse, play us out. Jesse, is there any way anyone can reach you for gigs? How does anyone book you? Where can anyone reach you? What do we plug in here? Oh, keep an eye so, out for uh, Angels of My Town's next event. Yeah, keep an eye out. We're, we're coming up with events very soon. Events. So uh, you, you can find me on Instagram at Flying Chunks. Flying Chunks. That's Flying true. Chunks. Yeah, yeah. I was going to change chunks, it. Flying Chunks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I changed it over when, when I started skydiving and stuff. I, I may or may not have thrown up a couple of times, so I got a nickname. Uh, uh, how, many times you guys, how many times have you gone skydiving? Uh, just shy of 130 at this point. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so it's like old hand. Is it, is it like every time you go, you're just looking for a greater rush? Like, drop me out a little higher. I'm going to let my parachute go a little bit way longer. <laughs> a little bit longer. A so, little bit longer. Ooh, give me that. Ooh, mommy. Oh. So it seems like it would be something where it's like, you're just falling flat, but you can actually fly your body in the air once you kind of learn how to do some stuff. Like a Even, squirrel. Pretty much, yeah. You can move yourself around. You can fly in groups and stuff like that. So it becomes, uh, you start working your towards that kind of stuff. I see a lot of other people, I think they do the base jumping. Like they'll jump off uh, buildings yeah. and uh, cliffs. And Are you doing that? I am not. Wing suits. Uh, yeah. No, not at the moment. Um, I seen a wingsuit is, guy go down a fucking mountain like this, whoosh, flying through the fucking cabin. And not make it home. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a handful of those guys that are uh, that are still kicking around. Um, a lot of those more popular videos. Um, unfortunately, it's it's is the world's most dangerous extreme sport. And when I first started skydiving five years ago, the average lifespan of a uh, base jumper was about seven years. Wow. And in the last five years, that's dropped down to five. So it is. Oh, um, it's one of those things where if you're gonna go do it, you better really want it. You it know? must be really fun. <laughs> it is, uh, it's, man. Jumping out of an airplane, there's nothing like it. So jumping <laughs> out of an airplane, there's nothing like it. So that you know that these guys, whatever they're doing, is that next level. That yes, that that, that next uh, room, that forbidden room to go in. Ooh, what's in there? Yeah, like right? so mo most skydivers think base jumpers are crazy, <laughs> right? So right, they gotta like, be. Ooh, yeah. how close can I get to death? Yeah, it's definitely, Ooh. and I I think a big part of it is like you know it won't be me like that's a big thing for a lot oh yeah of people, well, that's right? what I'm never gonna die it's not, it's not gonna smoking. be that's anything but though. you gotta think yeah. though if you do die in most of those accidents you're probably dying like real quick oh not yeah super painful oh you know? doctor yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I knew that would get him. Uh, anyways, right, anybody wants play, to book Jesse, book him. Out. He's great. Great guy. Yeah. Jesse, play us out. Everybody's good. Mike, thank you. Thank you. Carl, Until thank next you. time. Great show, guys. Play great us shows. Out, Thanks Jesse. a lot, Jesse. Play us out, Jesse. What the fuck awesome. does that even mean, play us out? Play us out to the end of the song. End of the show. This is it. Thank you. Goodbye. End of the show. End of the show. End of the show. Play us out. Play us out. Play us out. Fucking thing sucks. Interview adjourned. You say we're done. You packed up your stuff. It's really over. Said you've had enough. There's one thing that I'd like to say. Before you leave Fuck you bitch You broke my heart Fuck your friends For tearing us apart Fuck your dog Hope he never comes home Fuck you bitch Hope you wind up alone I'm just saying. <laughs> now you're gone, and I'm by myself, jerking off to pictures on myself. But before I swipe on your face, I just scream. Best country song I've ever heard. Fuck you, bitch. You broke my heart. Told you. <laughs> Fuck your friends. Fuck your friends. For tearing us apart. They're not answering their phones. Fuck <laughs> your dog. Fuck Hope that he dog never dog. comes home. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, bitch. Hope you wind up alone. All alone. The word is out. You found someone new. Well, I hope he does it for you. But if not, and you call me up, darling, please. Fuck you, bitch. Woo. You Shit broke is my heart. Fuck, Fuck your friends. friends. For tearing us apart. Yeah, answer text Those messages. Assholes. Fuck your dog. Hope he never comes home. Fuck you, bitch. Shut up. Hope you wind up alone. Fuck you, bitch. For not telling Hope me my nipples out up on the show. I like your name a lot. <laughs> oh, thank you guys. Thank you for next time on Angels of My Town. Thank you guys. Thank you. That was awesome. Cut there. Yep, cut. Cut.